all right hello everyone and peace of christ all of you please invite your friends and we are trying to make a series of videos they are short like compared to my normal long videos so it's easy for you to download and share around please don't forget to download the video after we finish and change the title as it is fit with the topic as you wish uh, because if you keep the same title they will appear in the same page uh, a Muhammadan, his name is Sabir, Sabir Ali, and he is a very official liar. He uh, made a video and claiming that Jesus was a Muslim messenger, and even he did jihad. He was like Muhammad, he raped women, he killed, he steal, and even he was an accused of stealing underwear like Muhammad. Because this is what it's mean to say to be a Muslim, is to be like Muhammad. The best, the best Muslim in the world is he. Who? Muhammad. And all those things happen to Muhammad. Even the Muslims accuse him of stealing underwear. So this guy, he always try his best in order to make you believe in such a garbage cult, it's called Islam, to lower the status of Jesus and insult him so you will not believe in him as the good Lord. And this is the purpose of saying that he was a Muslim. You, you call yourself as a Christian prince. But honestly, let me tell you, Jesus, the son of Mary, the mighty messenger who was a Muslim, his message was Islam. He used to do jihad against people like you. People used to deceive. People used to lie. People used to oppress. He okay, so Jesus, the, he was a Muslim and he was doing jihad against people who lie. But your prophet, he said you can lie, you idiot liar. Isn't it your prophet who said you can lie in three cases? Did he say that or not? Starting with lying to your wife. Showing us the ethic of the filthy Muhammad. And lying to your enemy. And this is what you do to us because according to Islam we are your enemy. Playing taqiyya. Let me get the hadith. And lying between your friends, supposedly the purpose is to fix problem. This is your, the ethic of your prophet. Read it. So if you are against lying, you should be against the ethic of anyone who teach lying. And here we can compare between what Jesus say and what you just said about Jesus being a prophet of Islam. If we right now go, and you can do the same with me, everybody, what Jesus said about lying. About what? About lying. You will find tons of verses Jesus is speaking against lying. And he, claim, he, he make it clear that in Christianity, either you say yay, yay, or no, nay, nay, which means it be truthful. And this is, can be found in the Old Testament, the New Testament, doesn't matter. So if you are a follower of Muhammad, claiming that Jesus he is the same as Muhammad. And remember, Muhammad is the highest person in Islam, not, not the Messiah. The Muslims, they use the Messiah as just a name so they can fool you and they can get into your pant. All the Bible speak clearly against lying. So how you get me, a person who you call him a prophet, saying that it's okay to lie. Do you see the Bible, my friend? You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father, is the father of all lies. Of lies. Jesus here is speaking about you and your prophet. And here we go. This is your prophet claiming that a decent man can lie to his wife. 
what a wonderful Islamic family is. There was a fatwa where a woman she made complain, a stupid woman she married a Muslim, and he went to Jordan, he would go to Jordan every few months, and he tell her, I want to visit my parents, they are sick. And later she found that he is married. And she was asking in the Muslim website, well, I asked him many times, he never, he said to me, I'm not married, don't worry. And then she found out that he is married. So she's saying to him, is he allowed to do so? The, the fatwa said to her, first of all, you are not allowed to ask him such a question. He have the right to marry for. Number two, he is allowed to lie to you. So when you speak about ethic, you filthy liar, and you speak about Jesus is a Muslim, you are saying to us that Jesus is a liar. And the first lie we start with is lying to our wives, which mean women and men in Islam, they are a lying house. The whole house is established on lying. And this is lawful. What kind of a prophet he made such a thing lawful? And this is not, they cannot say this is not authentic hadith, as you see, it says here authentic. And it's funny when the Muslim they say authentic because nothing authentic in your cult. I mean, what kind of, this is the devil authentic. And then you can lie to your wife and what else? Lie during the war. Muslims, they are in war with us. The Quran chapter 9 verse 29 and this guy, he caught himself from the chapter of a Tawbah, says, kill the Christians wherever you find them until they pay the jizya or else. And Muhammad sent the three letters saying to the Christians, you know, convert or die. Can we prove that? Here we go. Let us see. You see, anything we say, we give a proof of it. We don't make speeches like those. Brothers and sisters, Islam says teach peace. Islam is all about peace, brothers and sisters. Prophet was so beautiful and he taught us to have peace. What a sneaky garbage bag you are. Show us reference, you donkey. And don't miss the real reference. Is that your prophet talking? I am commanded to fight. And the word fight here is fight to kill or qatil. Tons of authentic stories saying that I've been commanded that I should fight against the people. Tell. So what is the purpose of fighting us? So the Muslim, they say to you, oh, no, no, don't you, if, okay, if, if the enemy capture you, don't you lie to them to protect your friends as an example? This is not the scenario, you coward. You Muslim believe that you are in war with anyone who don't believe in Allah and the proof in front of you. I have been commanded that I should fight against the people till they declare that there is no scumbag but Allah and no false prophet but Muhammad. And then their blood and their riches are granted the protection from my behalf. Muhammad is a thief. If you don't accept Muhammad as a prophet, he will take your blood. He's a Dracula. As you see, this is not me saying that. It's in front of you. If you want your blood not to be sucked by the Dracula Muhammad, convert to Islam. If you want your money not to be taken by the filthy thief, pirate, gang, rapist Muhammad, convert to Islam. This is what, this is what it says in front of you. And the funny, they call him Holy Prophet. The child molester, Holy Prophet. So when they say to us what they say, we always get them busted. What they do in, in, in return, they give us a speech. They play victim. Brothers and sisters, Christian Prince is a hate teacher. The Quran, chapter nine, verse chapter five, verse fourteen. The Quran says that Allah spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. You idiot liar. So how I am a, a, a hate teacher? Why do I ever say we hate Muslims? We never say that. Or you will cut now my voice. You say, hey, here we go. Do you see the sentence? You do the, edit the video as you do because you are a fraud. We never said we hate Muslims. We always say we love Muslims.
And that's why we want to save you. Because this is the order and the command of our Lord, the Messiah. Otherwise, I will not be a Christian. But this is the command of your faithy God. From those who they call themselves a Christian, we took covenant, but they did forgot a good part of the message that we sent to them. So we string them with enmity and hatred between them, one to another, until the day of judgment. That is Satan. And you are talking about hatred, you filthy coward. Now, going back to our topic, as long as he said that Isa was a Muslim and he was doing jihad, we will talk about the jihad topic later. Based on what he say, Isa was teaching to beat your wife too. This is an interview by the BBC. By the way, the BBC, or I don't know, the, the, uh, the fourth channel in the UK, they have a video, it's called Dispatch. I invite all of you to search for it and download it and share it with your friends. Dispatch. The Muslims after that, they made a case against them and Dispatch was, was what? Was a TV station going inside the mosque recording secretly. And you will see all kind of propaganda of hate and violence against Western and Christians and atheists. So in public TV outside, oh, we Christians, you know, we love the Christians. Inside the mosque when they are alone. And don't take my word. Go watch the video. This patch, it's made even by atheists. Who supposedly converted to Islam. And he was hiding his camera inside his clothing. And everything was recorded. So when there is foreigners coming to the mosque, they speak about peace and love. The second everybody leave and the door is closed on Muslims, then the whole propaganda of hate and killing and violence and ISIS appear. Search it, if you don't believe me. Now this is a mullah, is they are asking him in the BBC, why, why you support you know, beating women? What does that mean? He said, we have to consider all possible situations. If a woman does not fulfill her responsibilities in marriage, first you advise her. If that doesn't work, then you consult her relatives. If that doesn't work, then you desert her in bed. If all of this doesn't work, then light beating is allowed. Light beating. The liars, the coward, they keep adding light beating. Okay, let us go to the Quran. Let us see where is the light beating. Let us get you busted. By the way, I will make a video about Mimi Hijab, the coward, who is making a video about a, a, a beating wife. I just saw, saw it. And we will be fun to, to, to make a special video about this potato. Look at the wife beating lightly. I challenge any Muslim to show me where in the Quran it says light beating. It's a lie. They add that to the translation to fool you. And they add first and next and third. Do you see it? Between two brackets, they put lightly. Where, where is lightly coming from? Why it's between two brackets? Why first is between two brackets? Why next is between two brackets? That is additional. That's not the Quran. If you change the translation from Yusuf Ali, let us see the front one. Right away you will see the meaning change. It's like a miraculous stuff. It's like a new Quran. Look, there's no first, there's no second. And here it says, scourge them. Scourge them. This is a Muslim Imam from Egypt. He's teaching his followers the good manner of Allah and his prophet how to treat your wife. In the, in the problems we have in life, that the women, she don't come to the bed of the man, which means that she would not to do boom boom. Okay, what is the solution according to Islam? Let us see. The problem of this is movies and series in TV. They taught our women to be disobedient. See it. Look, look at this. 
This is a Muslim Sheikh explaining life on air on TV. Here you notice that they don't say this in America. So what happened? Why in America they say something? In Egypt they say something else because that is an Islamic country. In America they play cats. In Egypt they play lions. Do you see the difference? لمت النساء النشوس وكأنها صارت مستقلة بحياتها. Those movies they are teaching the women to be independent, as if she became independent, like she became a not full human being. That's not allowed. That's haram. And can do it whenever she they want, and refuse it whenever they don't want. They don't. See this filthy woman, brother? The woman, she thinks she is independent. She thinks she's a human being. She can refuse having sex now. She, you know, do you believe it? Do you see the filthy prophet? If a man he invited his wife for sex, she have to open her legs even if she is in the top of the camel. Did you hear it? <laughs> and he's talking about what? About beating women. Why we beat them? Because what you can do with them? What do you want us to do? Now, there is tons of videos made by Muslims explaining to you that beating women is halal. And the Quran says that. But the Muslims, they will try to say all their lies trying to cover the ass of Muhammad. But here we don't cover it. We expose it and we make it naked. If we go in the hadith, we will find the following. Explaining how faithy Muhammad is supporting what this guy was saying a woman she is not coming to bed so we have to beat her look at this and now the Muslims they will say uh, Muhammad is a liar Prophet Muhammad is a liar this is Sahih al-Bukhari and this is a very authentic hadith when I say authentic, it's mean it's coming directly from the biggest liar ever on earth. Approved by the Muhammadan. The liars approving the liars. Here you will notice that the Muslim woman, she was divorced from a husband. And now she married a new husband. But she don't want to marry the new husband. She don't want to sleep with the new husband. Because she don't like to sleep with him. Obviously he's old. She liked the previous husband. So the man, he did beat her until he made her clothes a greener than her clothes. Read with me. Aisha said that a lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her, to Aisha, for her husband, uh, uh, from her husband, and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. It was the habit of the ladies. Look how bad the ladies. They support each other. It was the habit of the ladies, brother, to support each other, brother. So when Allah Messenger came, Aisha said, I did not see any women suffering as much as a believing woman. Aisha, she is witnessing that the worst, worst position for a woman is to be a Muslim wife. Not me saying that in front of you. Aisha saying that the most ugly life a woman she have is to be a wife, a believing woman, which means she is married to a Muslim. Do you see it? This is a statement of Aisha. Are you going to say it doesn't say that, CB? Bunch of fraud? Look, her skin is a greener than her clothing. Did Muhammad say to the guy, shame on you? Did he say to him, why you did hit her so hard? I told you lightly. Muhammad, actually, the Muslim, they claim that as long you are not breaking the bones, it is okay. Actually, there's a book made by a Muslim cleric. You can search it right now. You can go to Google search. A Muslim cleric in Spain made a book about how to beat your wife, yet you don't, don't go to jail because you're in Spain. So he was advising the Muslim to put the board. 
like you know uh, like this the, the one you use for your boxing if you want to ship something so you put this this material under her panty and then you spank her by beating her by hand or by a belt and that they will do cause a lot of pain will not leave marks so she cannot call the police and prove her case against you so the women here if you read the story Abdul Rahman heard that his wife she has gone to the Prophet and he came to him and with his son with him and he said she said by Allah I have done no wrong to him but he is impotent, um, which means he cannot have sex and he is useless to me as this holding her dress showing like you know she is he's like a piece of fabric and then the man he said she hasn't told a lie I am very strong I, I can satisfy her with boom boom but she is disobedient and she want to go back to Rifa look at this Muhammad the filthy he created a rule in the Quran in case you are not aware that if a Muslim woman she divorced her husband three times or her I mean the, her husband divorced her three times she cannot go back to him unless she if literally a new husband and I say if why I say if because it, because this is what Muhammad will say in the hate we will read that continue but let us see uh, the Quran have you ever heard of a filth like this if you divorce your wife she cannot come back to you unless she sleep with a new husband a new man in Arabic we call him the donkey read carefully this is Quran this is not me this is not Christian Prince saying so if a husband divorce his wife he cannot after that remarry her until after she sleep not not marry you see it says and until she if somebody they translate the word if as marriage until she if someone else a new husband and that new husband he divorced her so take that note this is a chapter 2 verse number 230 the rule of the filthy minded corrupt man his name is Muhammad so now a woman she have a children her husband because Islam allow you know if you are against a divorce why you make it so easy for a Muslim man to say divorce divorce she is gone that's it all what you need is to say a word actually now they approve even text message so if you want to stop divorce from happening well don't allow it to be easy like what about you say if you want to divorce her you have to wait a year from the from the day you say she is divorced uh, uh you know you have uh, uh, uh it doesn't matter how many times you say it uh, because you're an idiot uh, still you can have her back no Because it's not her fault now. Why you, you why you don't even say never divorce a wife? Never. And if Jesus as a Muslim, then why Jesus he forbid the Christian men from divorcing their wife unless she is doing fornication? How Jesus is a Muslim then? Here we see that the clear lie that Muslims when they say Jesus was a Muslim is to insult Jesus to make Jesus filthy for forgive me Lord for saying that word we are saying it for the purpose of education to make Jesus guilty of the filth of Islam and we knew our Lord is a holy person who taught nothing wrong and he did nothing wrong and here you notice in this story here that the man he wanna rape the women he want what he want to rape her literally listen carefully we just showed you the scholars they are saying a woman she thinks she can refuse to come to the bed anytime the prophet says the angel will curse her all night and the top of that what the man he can beat her look so uh, after Aisha she said to him look her skin is greener than her clothes and Abdul Rahman came, the husband, he said, she told a lie. I am very strong in boom, boom. But she want to go back to her husband, Rafa. Okay, problem, question. As long as this woman, she don't want you. And you know that she like another man. Shame on you. This is here showing us that Muslims have no dignity. 
you have a woman in your bedroom and this woman she love another man and you are trying to take her against her will and you beat her in order to take off her panty what kind of cult this cult is and now let us see Muhammad now is a judge if Muhammad go against the man that's mean the man is wrong and Muhammad is a good guy if Muhammad took the side of the man that's mean Muhammad is a fraud look what happened so uh, she is disobedient and she want to go back to Rifa. Rifa is the previous husband Allah messenger said to her ha, ha, ha. if your intention then if this is your intention you should know then it is unlawful for you to go back to Rifa unless Abdul Rahman do boom boom to you look at the filthy idiot so it's clear now that this woman she want to go back to different man she don't want this guy okay why you don't say okay guys and so she she you cannot force her to love you then divorce her let her go no it's against Allah teaching because as we showed you in the Quran in chapter 2 Allah, Allah said that if you divorce her three times the women she cannot go back to the previous husband unless she do boom boom with a new husband so Muhammad here is saying okay well if you want to go back to the previous husband you have to do boom boom with this with, with, with this with this gorilla but the women obviously she don't want to do boom boom with this guy so Muhammad is giving permission to the man to rape her and look what he said if your intention to go back to Rifa to remarry him huh you cannot do that unless you sleep with this guy first and he do intercourse with you actually in Arabic it doesn't even say intercourse with you the filthy liars when they translate they hide the translation in Arabic it says that that until he tastes your juice until what he tastes your juice if I take this sentence here and I put it in the search engine in the front of your eyes just to show you how filthy this man is who marries six years old child I put the same word and you will see how the translation changed immediately read what happened here the same sentence it became what until he tastes your sweetness and he you taste his sweetness and you taste his sweetness do you see it the same story what happened where, is, where what intercourse if you remember once a Muslim he was trying to debate me and he did his best and as always we get them busted if we take the word asila and we put it in the Islamic Arabic dictionary and I will do that in the front of you asila guys do you see the meaning Remember here, we are talking about sex. The woman, she is refusing to have sex with the husband. This is the Islamic dictionary. I put the word here. This is the word Asila. As you see in the screen. And this is the meaning. Orgasm. Or what? Orgasm. So now the woman, she is being beaten until her skin became a greener because she don't want to sleep with this husband and Muhammad taking the side of the husband and in the top of that he made a verse in the Quran saying you can beat your wife the Muslim they lie to us and they say you can beat them lightly the stories we have it says you beat them until their skin is a greener than their clothes do you see anywhere Muhammad he said to her uh, say to the guy shame on you to beat her that harsh no he did not you know, Aisha, she mentioned already, look, 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 her skin. 
I did not, I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. So Muhammad was told that her skin is greener than her clothes. Did Muhammad say to the man, shame on you? He took his side. In the top of that, he said to her, you have to allow him to rape you because it is rape. You see, if you want to sleep with the woman and she is your wife and she don't want to sleep with you, this is a rape. So what if she's your wife? That is officially a rape. Because rape is taking somebody sexually against his or her will. And obviously, the man, he, the, the, the husband now, he, he told Muhammad what is the problem. She want to go back to the previous husband. So why Muhammad didn't say, okay, well, let her go. She don't want you, man. Don't beat her. She have the right to be with you or not. She don't like you. She made a mistake to marry you. And as long divorce in Islam is so easy, so what the problem? The problem is that Muhammad, he made a rule that the Muslim women, she have to have sex around in order to come back to her husband. So if you are a Muslim, like if, uh, if uh, Sabil, if Sabil, Dr. Sabil, he divorced his wife three times, and I challenge him to say I'm lying. And I will not be surprised if he divorced her because those Muslims, you know, the, the, when the woman, she get older, she is like nine years old. Let's make her older in Islam. She will go to Pakistan and he will get a brand new wife. She is like five years old, like the prophet. And now if he divorced his wife three times and then he want to have her back, he have to call CP and say to him, CP, if you convert to Islam, I can use your help. I will say, Sabir, how I can help you? He says, can you marry my wife for one night stand? Because she cannot get back to me unless she tastes your juice and you taste her juice. And what juice mean? We showed you, it mean orgasm. This is the Muslim dictionary. I have nothing to do with it. Orgasm as honey. <laughs> so when this filthy man he say that the messiah was a muslim he is saying that the messiah was teaching men to be their wives to rape their wives to have sex with the children as we showed you muhammad he encouraged muslim men to have sex with the children and he himself he did when this man, he said the Messiah was a Muslim, that's mean we can lie to our wives. And a woman, she can lie to her husband. And all of us, we knew that this is a very disgusting and this is a big insult to our Lord, the Messiah. And this is the whole point. The whole point is how we can insult the Messiah so you disrespect him and you think he is no one and then you become a Muslim. The purpose of this garbage of calling the Messiah, insulting the Messiah, saying that he is a Muslim, is to downgrade the value of Christ, to destroy his ethic and his teaching as Lord, as Savior, as Holy, to make you believe that the Messiah is not better than Muhammad. Muhammad was a child molester, so is Isa, which is supposedly the Messiah in Islam. So people, you have to be very careful. When they are doing this, this is a very aggressive attack in Jesus. They hate him. He is their enemy. Islam is the enemy of Christ. They do anything they have in the book of the devil to put Jesus down under your feet. They want you to step literally on Jesus. They want you to spit on Jesus. They want you to believe that Jesus is a child molester, the like prophet. He's a women beater. He's a cheater. He told us to lie. This is what they want. So you, you as a Christian, you have a duty. To take this video and share it with everyone. 
so the Christian will not be deceived by those deceivers because when they say to you Jesus was a Muslim what does that mean people need to know people need to know what they mean and as you see everything we say we show it in the screen by reference not like this coward and by the way they quote for you those Muslims they quote for you verses which is abrogated in the Quran which means it's not valid Muhammad the thief the criminal when he was weak he was like this guy brothers and sisters we love Muslims, we love the Christians, we love the Jews. Huh? This is Muhammad in the beginning, like this. Listen to him, listen to him. This guy, you think he's made from plastic. Like, almost his battery is gone. Why he's so soft? Look at this. Green. And not only that, he said that we, brother, he called the Christian brothers and sisters when this is against Islam. The Quran says you should kill the Christians unless they pay the jizya. And this filthy, because now he is living in America, he is weak in America. But if he's teaching, preaching in Pakistan, he would say the Christian are our enemy. Kill them. Whatever. Go and see how they treat the Christians in Pakistan. Please go and search. So why Islam in America is so peaceful, but Islam in Pakistan is so disgusting? Because here they practice taqiyya, which means protection lying to protect themselves from saying the truth if they say the truth they will be in trouble in Pakistan they don't have to do that tens of thousands attack a female woman a female Christian woman they accuse her that she insulted the Prophet and they want to burn her alive and they put her in jail for years and years and years and when the court released her after the pressure of USA and many other country and the United Nation, they wanted to kill the president. They wanted to kill the judge. So why Islam is nice in this mosque in America, but Islam is very ugly in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq? Why only Islam is nice when American is controlling the, the ground. Why? Why the second, the Western have no authority there? Islam is, is Taliban. Islam is ISIS. Islam is Al-Qaeda. For this is the true Islam. We showed you Muhammad says, I've been ordered. To kill all mankind, all of them, until they convert to Islam. You see the order? Who, who is the one who commanded Muhammad to do so? The devil, Allah. I've been commanded by Allah. Do you see it? To fight the people, all people. They say to you, Islam defending, we are defending ourselves. No, read it. It says, I've been commanded to fight the people until they convert to Islam. It's not the opposite. And not only that, the filthy Muhammad, he told the Muslims that Muslims, they have the right to put a chain around your neck like a dog. And the Quran told the Muslims that they are supremacist. They are supreme. Islam is a supremacist cult where everybody, according to the Quran, nudges filthy, dirty. And therefore, a Muslim is allowed, because he is the best of mankind, to put a chain around your neck and bring you like a dog. Read carefully. You are the best people of people ever raised for the for, between two brackets for the benefit of mankind. When you see this, you say Muslims are the benefit for the benefit of mankind. Ah, maybe they will stop Corona. Maybe they will give a charity. Maybe no, no. Read carefully. The best for mankind are those who bring them with a chain round their necks like dogs. Do you see it? The Muslim they will say Christian prince doesn't say dogs. But you put a chain around the neck of somebody. He's what for you. Christian friends don't lie. You're a liar. It doesn't say dogs. Why are you adding the word dogs? They are silly. They make heroes over silly stuff. You know, a Muslim, 
in order to refute you, he cannot answer everything you said. And then you say, let us say, like now, uh, let us say, uh, you say the prophet, uh, he uh, was uh, very thirsty, he have lies. The hadith says he took shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage. And there was, uh, 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 let us say, uh, a condom in the water. They will say, what is the word condom? What is the word? So, so now the important is not the not Muhammad taking shower with dead dogs. The important is what is the condom? It's not important no more that their prophet taking shower with garbage. They got you busted. Where is the word condom? There's no condom there. You're a liar. I challenge you. What is the word condom? Hey, Abdul, I'm just showing you how filthy it is. But you lie. There's no condom. But there is women of blood from menstruation and dead dogs and garbage, as you see in the hadith. But there is no condom. But my friend, that, so you have no problem that your prophet taking shower with dead dogs and women blood from period and garbage. But there is no condom. You lied. You are a liar. You are a hate preacher. But uh, so so now what, what what was the topic? There is no condom. So the topic now there is no condom. The topic is not anymore that they have a mentally ill, sick, filthy man. His name is Muhammad who takes shower with dead dogs and women are blooded from period. The topic now is there's no condom. You did lie. It doesn't say that, CP. And not only that, Muhammad, he says that, women, that the water is always pure. Look, they say to him, Prophet, you do perform wudu from the well of Bida, which body of the dogs and women menstruation rags and garbage. Guys, this is the Muslim translation. Read, read carefully for God's sake. This is not a Christian prince translation. Read carefully, please. What is in the water? What is inside the water? Concentrate with me. In the water, we have the following items. Bodies of dogs, not one, not two. We do not know how many. And then we have the women at that time, not like now, they can use uh, like uh, 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 things for menstruation, they throw it in the garbage. In that time, because this is not available, they use fabric and they put it there and then they wash it and then when it gets too old, too stinky, they throw it away. So, body of dogs, number one. Menstrual rags from the women, number two. And garbage. What the answer of Muhammad? The water is pure. So according to this filthy man, Sabir, he claiming that Jesus, forgive me, Lord, he will jump in a water like this. They wanted my friend to insult your Messiah, to downgrade him, to disrespect him, to spit on him. So be careful, my friend. And it's obvious that Muhammad is a scumbag. I mean, literally. What does scumbag mean? Read it. Go to the dictionary and read what scumbag means. This is a scumbag inside the garbage, literally. But now they will make a video, say, Christian Prince, it doesn't have a condom. There's no condom there. For those who just joined, please don't forget to download the video we made previously. We made a video just 20 minutes ago. It's there. Don't forget to watch it because usually people, what they do, they watch only the last video I post. I don't know why. Secondly, when you download the video, please change the name. Make it like fit with the title, with the story, as you wish. Change the title so the video will appear in everywhere. And please for post in Facebook, whatever you can, not only, guys, we have a duty. Those people, they are trying their best to deceive our fellow Christians and all those who we love, the Hindus, the Buddhas, everybody. They are trying to conquer the world so they will make you an idol worshipper of a black stone. And you have to mention the name of Muhammad, the mentally ill, sick, children, sexual predator, as you know. And we have everything we say in front of you on the screen. They want you to worship this man. 
to make him your best ethical example. This is how you do take a shower if you became a Muslim. I challenge this Sabir Ali, Sabir, Sabir Ahmed, to prove to us that this is not a mental issue. As long as you are a doctor, I want you to go to little jacuzzi and put some dead dogs there and put some menstrual rags from your wife. Ah, oh, you have four wives maybe. One legally and the three undercover. And then throw some garbage from the neighbors, from you, put them there and then take a selfie and show us the best example of following the Sunnah of Muhammad. Haid. Ministro in Arabic is Haid. Haid, which means women she bleed. Please download the video. Please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like what we do. We're trying to make the video shorter. I will be back later at night today. I'm not sure if I will be here or in the uh, uh, my other account, which is a quality of life. Uh, if you are not subscribed there, uh, this is a quality of life account, as you see in the screen. You can search it, quality of life M27. There we don't speak about garbage, we speak about quality stuff. So I might take a break from Islam and we speak about different topic. And if I feel like I want to spank Muhammad again, why not? I love it. And I love it when I see people leaving Islam. Every day, every day, there's more people leaving Islam because of our videos. This is why what we do is extremely important. What we do, not only important to make Muslims leave Islam, leave this cult, leave this garbage, leave the Prophet who, who, who swim literally in a, in, in a swamp, in a sewage, as you see. It's important to prevent people from being fooled. I cannot forget once that I received a message from a girl. She was, actually she used to come here, you know, but I know her for a while now. She said, I was going to convert to Islam next week. They scheduled the date so she will go to the mosque and take Shahada, the poor girl. She was like, I think, 17 when she came first time to my chat room. And then she started watching my videos. She was searching for Islam and she is convinced, that's it, that Islam is a great religion. Then she came to the chat room just to say, thank you. I was going to be a Muslim this coming week. We are scheduled for it, actually. They invite a lot of people. They want to make like a party and they will record me in video so they can use me for their propaganda. Just a video. She did not even, like she came to the chat room because of a video she saw in YouTube. This is how important what we do. Your daughter can be that daughter. Your son can be that son. So please share your knowledge, whatever you learned here. Don't keep it in your pocket. For that can come to you. They are trying to invade your household. Your children, they go to school. Muslims are very well trained to attack Christianity. Christians, they have no idea what Islam is about. They have no idea because in church, sadly, when we go to, to a church, they don't teach us anything about how even to answer people. Where you learn how to answer people, people? Tell me, did your priest ever taught you? No. Am I lying? When the last time you saw a priest in a church teaching you how to refute Islam? Actually, not only they teach you not to refute Islam, they encourage you not to even to talk about it. It's not right and they might accuse you that you are doing wrong. So how you will learn about Islam, how you to answer them, who is going to teach us? Who's going to teach us? Who is going to teach your child so he will not be fooled by a Muslim? You do not know. Your child don't know. The priest himself is an ignorant. He's just making money, taking salary. And he don't dare even to speak about it because uh, he would just want to do business. For them, it's a business. For us, it's a salvation.
it will be very painful for you if your child became a Muslim and you will regret that you did not teach him what we taught you. I always remember the 16 years old boy from Australia who his father saw him suddenly in Syria. Imagine 16 years old boy. He disappeared at the age of 15. They smuggled him. They made him convert to Islam. He disappeared from the house. His father don't know. He reported the police, but nobody knows where he go. Imagine this mafia was able to smuggle him all the way from Australia, all the way to Syria with no passport. Is it amazing? How powerful this gang of the devil? And that can happen to your son. This child, if he saw some of my videos, he will never do that. And he will be alive right now. His father saw him driving a truck, getting ready to drive a truck so he will explode himself in Syrian soldiers. How sad. A beautiful young youth. His life been destroyed, taken by the devil. They convince him. And look, the faith, he doesn't send their own kids. They send the converter. They don't send their own kids. Why you are sending a kid who, who, who convert to Islam at the age of 16? Why you don't send your kid? Because those are the children of the Christian. Let them die. We use them before he changes his mind and he leaves now. Coronavirus is a good virus compared to Islam. Trust me. All those who die by coronavirus until now, they are not even one to a billion to what Islam did. We love the Muslim, yes. But we don't love the faith of Islam. For Islam is antichrist. Islam is anti-good. Islam is anti-ethic. Islam is anti-logic. Islam anti-health. I mean, this is, look at this. They, you know, this, this filthy Sabir, I made a video for him, I don't know how many of you watch it, about Islam and scientific what? I forgot the name. Anyone remember the name? How Islam uh, uh, can help to stop corona? Something like that. I mean, it's a full of lies, man. And I made a video for them. I made them shish kebab. And because they knew they are no match. You see, uh, once there is a Muslim, he post a, a comment in Mimi Hijab. He said, don't debate a Christian prince. He's like a bulldozer. Will go over you. He don't even see you. Go prepare yourself before you go there. And this is a Muslim advising Mimi Hijab not to go there. He's not ready. He's a bulldozer. He will go over you and he will not even see you because you are too small for him. And this is why those coward, they keep saying they want to debate me face to face. Because they knew I don't go in camera. I don't look good, my friend. Don't you see? That's why I'm still single. If I look good, I will put my camera and now like, I will like, man, but what I can do? Should I do like face lifting and stuff, you guys? You know? I don't look good like your prophet Muhammad because I don't take shower with dead dogs and women blood from period and garbage because this is the best scenario and recipe for skin. I need to do this recipe. Maybe my skin will become small. I was asking myself, why Muhammad jump in a water have dead dogs? And this water, by the way, is in the size of a jacuzzi. Actually, there is different hadith. It describes for you exactly. It is six cubit wide, and it is less than the height of the private part. You see, we are not making things up. Here we go. This is the hadith. This is Sunan Abi Dawood, and this is Sahih. How big it was? Read it. He got his sheet, his address. He put it in the top of it. It measures six cubit as wide. And it was lower than his private part. Do you see it? At most, it's a small jacuzzi. Small jacuzzi have dead dogs, women of blood different period, 
and the garbage of all the town of the village of Mecca. They are burning my book. Yeah, I mean, they, this is one of the stupid things they do. They buy my book to burn it. Okay, well, that will support me anyway. I will print more books for you. I hope tomorrow you will order one million book to 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 uh, to burn them. Please, uh, brother. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm not going to stay longer than this, so it is going to be easier for you to download the video, and I will try to come back later at night. Actually, uh, I will see how many view here we have. If the view is high in the last two videos, I will come back on an air. If not, I will wait until more people watch this video because what happened usually, people they watch only the last video. Why? I don't know. Even if there is two minutes two minute between them, they watch only the last video. So please, Christians, be Christian. Be a warrior. A Christian is not a Christian by name. If you don't have time for Jesus, Jesus will not have time for you no more because you don't deserve it. Time will come and he will say to you, where you been? What you did? How many soul you brought for me? What you will say? I was busy buying cars, houses, going picnic. The month has 30 days. How many days in the month you give to them? How many hours actually? If you don't have time for Christ, if you don't have an hour a week for Christ, what do you have? My friend, be Christian. From their fruit, you shall know them. The Muslim, from their, from their fruit, we shall know them too. Muhammad, from his fruit, we shall know him too. The Messiah, from his fruit, we shall know him too. How we know the Messiah? From his fruit. The fruit of the good Lord. The fruit of the faithy Muhammad. The fruit of the faithy teaching of Allah, Aka Muhammad. This is how we knew and recognize. If the Messiah come now, I don't know how he look like. But you will recognize him. He will come with the glory of his angels. And he is always as he is, pure, holy, powerful. The Alpha and the Omega. And then the Messiah will order his angels to bring the faith in Muhammad. And he will get what he deserves. Let us do work together so Christ will recognize us. For one day, the book will be open and they will see, they will call your name, what you did, what is your fruit. The Bible is full of parables speaking about preparing, be ready for the Lord coming. Like the story of the ladies who they are waiting and some of them they have no oil in their candle at night. They are waiting at night but you have no candle, you have no oil. This is what will happen to us. We have a candle but we did not get oil in it. That means our candle is useless. That means our faith was useless. We don't have faith, it was fake. Where is your oil? The Bible says, faith without work, without fruits, is a dead faith. And this is what many they are suffering from. They call themselves a Christian. They hold a cross in the wall. They have a Bible at home. But how many people you brought to Christ? That is a good question to ask yourself. By posting those videos all over, you protect people from converting to the cult of Islam because this is their purpose. In the same time, by doing that, you save the human being, a Christian child who was going to be deceived, and you get the blessing. Or maybe a Muslim will see this video, you post it, and leave Islam and accept Christ. That means you get the blessing too of saving a Muslim, which we love to save. So either way, you have a fruit. You did your part. You, did, you are doing what you can. I mean, it's very simple, very easy. Download the video and repost the video. Don't use your name. Use a fake name. I mean, how simple it can be. 
I am the one who take the threat. I am the one they want to kill me. I am the one they want to chase me. I am the one who go against me. What you will lose? If I ask myself now, how many million they wish to kill me? And ask yourself the same question. How many? I think you cannot imagine how many. But that will not stop me. I will live. They like it or not for our life is written in the kingdom of God and death is going to happen anyway so I better die as a hero for a Christ not as a dog hiding not to say the truth Muslim they will say to you well he don't show his face so I can continue my mission until the last moment before you can take me down so I can save as many so I can make your target hard. The invisible target. In the same time, I get more blessing. For the Lord, he said, if you give with the left hand, don't let the right hand know. Nobody know who I am. I receive no glory of mine. Who is a Christian prince? Nobody. So it is a double reward for me. And I thank the Lord for giving me the opportunity for having all those beautiful people here. And I pray, we pray to the Muslims, we pray to the Christian, we pray to the Hindu, we pray to the Jews, so the world can see the light of a Christ and see the good of him, for he have nothing but good. Good for you, good for your family, good for your future, good for your love. Actually, if we practice one sentence of a Christ, just one. You see, you might say, in order to be Christian, I need to read the Bible. True. I have to believe in the Bible, not only read it. But in order to be Christian, one sentence will make you one believing, wonderful believing Christian. Love your enemy. For this God, our Lord, is about love. And imagine if the whole world practice one sentence of a Christ. Love your enemy. The money we spend for armies, we do not need it. Security, we do not need it. Criminals are not exist. Imagine if every single human being Love his enemy. What is left? What is left? No enemy. No worry. No security needed, no risk. The, the earth will turn into heaven by one statement of the Lord the Messiah. The earth will turn into heaven before we go to heaven. So what is earth missing is one sentence of a Christ. Just one. You have it, you have a Christ. The good God no one better than him after all those centuries find me one one person believed in loving your enemy nobody will say that this is because this is too high this is too noble this is not even a human behavior this is godly teaching love your enemy So I want to say thank you and I will try to come back again online. Please subscribe, download the video, share it with your friends and until we see you again, maybe by 8 or 9 p.m. New York time, I will be here again, maybe before. Please, uh, you know, join our page, tell your friends and may the Lord bless you. Until we see you again, 
Christ is Lord. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, YouTube, Quality of Life, as you see, Quality of Life M27. So you can join us when we don't speak about Muhammad. We speak there about the Bible or uh, even uh, normal life uh, uh, stuff which we suffer from or people, they have a problem with it. So we have a nice discussion, Christian family discussion, let us say. So if you like to join this topic there, subscribe to that channel. And then after, you know, when we go live on air, you can join us in the conversation. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you and see you soon again. God is willing. Take care. Bye-bye.